And today again, it's time you can call us because we have our friends from the United States Embassy right here in Kingston, Jamaica. Yes, we have two uh, U.S. Embassy Consular Officers. We have uh, Paul Rivera, and he has been here before already. I'm a professional here, Vernon. Y you come to take over my show. <laughs> yes, sir, you better watch out. <laughs> and we have another, I, I must say, a seasoned person also. We have Sharon Davies. Yes, it's a pleasure to be back. Oh, it is good to have both of you. And you have some more time uh, left in Jamaica. I hope enough there, because that's a sad part of, uh, of it, you know. You stay here for a specific, specific time, and then you go to another country. And it's always very difficult to say goodbye. That's true, and Jamaica has been great, so yes. I'll be really sad to leave. And, uh, oh, talking about sad, I um, have to think about those persons who lost their lives recently, those Americans in Fort Lauderdale. Um, many of us in this country, when we heard, we, we couldn't believe it, because these things can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. You it have crazy anywhere. persons. <laughs> it has nothing to do with nationality again. You have crazy persons all over the world. No, it's an unbe unbelievable tragedy. Yes, it's pretty sad. And mm -hmm. uh, those families are strong and that they will stay together and, you know, support one another. So, from all my listeners, um, please pass it on to, um, but to the embassy and to those relatives that at your service really um, standing with them at this time. We appreciate okay. that. Thank Thanks you for your mm -hmm. condolences. All right, and I'm sure you have quite a number of other things to tell us about. Um, I know that you have, well, I know something exciting is coming about. I'm not going to touch that one yet. I, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in the U.S. when that is happening. I've never been, you know, well, we'll see how that goes, probably next year. But I understand that the Fulbright program is offering what they call it, the Humphrey Fellowship. That is correct. We have the Humphrey yes. Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Uh, program it's it's slightly different than the regular um, Fulbright Fellowship. The Humphreys yeah. is ge geared at mid-level professionals, mm -hmm. um, so folks that have a little bit of experience in their job. But it's just like the Fulbright program that it's combined academic work and professional work. The deadline for that application is coming up Friday, July first, twenty sixteen. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for more information on that, I would direct you to the embassy's website, website kingston.usembassy.gov, and you'll look for a, a link that says Educational Exchange. Right, so listeners, you can go there right now to find out uh, what's, um, get more information about the Fulbright program offering the Hobby Fellowship. Yes, sir. And I, let, I'm, I understand that allows you to travel across. United States. It does. The, the the Fulbright's one of the one of the greatest flagship programs that we have for yes. for um, folks abroad looking for yeah. educational opportunities in the United States. So, anybody who's interested, I I definitely recommend you take a look at the website. Because mm -hmm. we had a I had a guest here uh, this week, Erin Ramsey Nelson. I think she went on them and she was quite said it was really a l great learning experience. Yeah, it's a it's a her. transformative experience. Yeah. All right, anything else coming up um, that you want to tell us about? Uh, just a reminder to uh, American citizens here, the elections are coming up in November. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, can I tell you something? <laughs> I think Jamaicans have been following the campaign more than Americans. I, I'm sure <laughs> the, the world has. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, you continue. Uh, so, information is available on our embassy website mm -hmm. under the American Citizen Services section. And also just a, a Google of how you can register and make sure you get your uh, absentee ballot in time to submit it so that your vote can be counted in November. Yeah, I, I would direct you specifically to the Federal Voter Assistance Program. It's a government website, so it's F V. AP.gov. FVAP. Federal Voter Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, Americans Overseas linkage right on their homepage, and that'll also direct you to a lot of information. So it's FVAP.gov. GOV. So F as in Foxtrot, I think. V as in Victor. Yes, sir. A as in Apple, and P as in Papa. You got that? <coughs> you better know. You so yes, you want to vote. Uh, you're in Jamaica. Am I correct? They can stay right here and vote. Absolutely. They don't have to take a flight and go back to the states. They do not. They do not. And I recommend that everybody do it. You know, it's part of it's part of our civic responsibility to to chip in and vote. All right. So you go to that website right now, fvap.gov, and you'll get all the information that you need to 
have. So all those American citizens who are in Jamaica, you make sure you check that out. You don't have to go back home to vote. And that applies to <laughs> my coast law. We're, we're there. We're there. We've, <laughs> yeah. we've registered. We're good to go. Yes, yes. Now, a special day is coming up. <laughs> and yes. I've always said to myself, I want to be in the United States on that day. I've never been lucky enough to be there, but I, I think I might be somewhere else, which is probably just as good. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're going to tell my listeners about what is coming up because I know it's special for Americans. Yeah, July 4th is our nation's Independence Day. July 4th. This year will be the 200, uh, 240th year uh, of Independence. Uh, no, hold on, hold on. How much? Yeah? 240 years. 240 years. years. Mm-hmm. We can't catch up with you. <laughs> 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 and that will be on July 4th. July 4th. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a major holiday in the U.S. Um, I guess the first thing you think of are the fireworks all over the nation. Y- yes. That's, that's the biggest thing. They're beautiful. Will we be having fireworks at Embassy in Kingston? I want to because I, I love fireworks. <laughs> I hope they're going to have fireworks. Uh, not literally. Figuratively, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> celebrations. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a great time. Uh, barbecues happen across mm-hmm. the country. Um, people celebrate with their families. Uh, tourism is at a high. I think of people probably going to Disney World. They have fireworks every day, but it's super spectacular for the Independence Day. Um, so it's it, it, it's worth adding too, Vernon, that the U.S. is the U.S. is a melting pot, right? Where people from from everywhere. Um, everywhere. Uh, everywhere. So my, my family's from, from Latin America, and we certainly celebrate the 4th of July, but we celebrate with with Mexican food and um, the music that... Hot you know, and spicy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, so, so it's, it's, there, there's no one right way to do 4th to do of July. And for us who are here, uh, posted from the U.S., it's actually, I, f- I find it terrifically fun to celebrate 4th of July mm-hmm. in another country. Now, to Jam- be able to share it with the with the people Obviously, here. that Jamaica style. Yeah, you know, you, you know what? There's there's nothing wrong with a little jerk chicken <laughs> jerk with your Fourth of July <laughs> and festival <laughs> because it's a fest. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that is nice, though. Festival. <laughs> oh, that festival. is lovely. Yes, it's Ask the Council, and our guests are Paul Rivera and Sharon Davies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a call on the line. Let's go to Emmy. Emmy, how are you though? I'm good. Yeah, that's where you're calling from. Yes, I'm calling from Kingston. Good to have you. You go right ahead. Yes, um, actually, I have been traveling since 76, and I'm not so young. <laughs> 76, and mm. the last time I traveled was 2003, so my, uh, my, my B1, B2 visa expired, and I've not renewed it. But I, want, I was invited to a, a seminar. I'm in sales um, in Texas, and the sent me an itinerary and they paid all the expenses. It was for three days. And um, I didn't know that it took so long to get an appointment, no, because in those days you could get through quickly. But I applied and I got a five-month waiting period. Wow. <laughs> so the, the meeting would have passed and I would have missed an opportunity. It's really an opportunity um, because uh, the company is paying the expenses for the three days so I can go and um, learn something about the product so that, I, if anything, it can be sold here. So I um, tried the summary page, applica- applicant summary page. I sent an email to them explaining why I wanted to go. But um, I'm not, I've not gotten a response. And it's really next week, Thursday, is the meeting. <sighs> It's, there's a time factor here. So why did you call to... call before? Huh? Why did you call before? You know, Where did I? So call the program I... when they come on. They come on every other week. Sir, I don't believe I'm you. Sorry, I I'm on the road most of the time. I I'm sorry. I did not know that is something that took. I didn't know that there were so many changes. Yes. You know, yes. because All in right. my time you just make you just. I know. There, I know. They would inti- they, to they're gonna help you know though. Let I'm um, here from. Um, Sean, you can. Sure. Hi, Emily. I first want to apologize for the inconvenience. Um, yes. This was something we we plan to talk about today. We appreciate the, uh, the public's patience. Yes. And understanding uh, for those who, like you, are unable to get an appointment that they want, 
in time for for travel. Um, but we're prioritizing time sensitive cases, which are like the seasonal workers who go um, work in the U.S. And we're experiencing sort of the highest demand in in our history. And yes. so really, we are we are, and it, it keeps going up. So uh, once we get the priority cases done, and as demand eases up, we'll be able to hopefully schedule more appointments for B1 and B B2 uh, visas. Um, but in your case, since you know, in anyone else who has critical need for an appointment, so that you can travel to an event that you know is is happening before you get your scheduled appointment. What you can do on the website where you submit your application is to request an expedite. There's a um, at the top of the page. There's usually a, a link for you to click that says yes. after you've already submitted it, you say that you need you want to request an expedited appointment, and yes. that's the best way to do it. I apologize. I that you I've haven't done that. okay so that so we're yesterday. okay we're working our way through those and we have to reply to each one in in priority order um and that's the best way to do it i apologize that you haven't gotten a response to email but you can probably imagine that so many people are emailing us mm. and and that's becoming unmanageable as well it's about yeah. next week yeah that's <laughs> actually i have no, to get your ticket meeting is next week <laughs> eh? the, the the seminar is next week thursday right you bought and you, you have to buy a ticket and everything and boo. No, they, I didn't have to buy the the company who is um putting on the seminar. Yeah, but they, they, they can't buy it yeah. until you get your visa though. Yeah, but they probably didn't know that you know I was right. um, right. because I hadn't been traveling for about. Yeah, man, it's peak season, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's what I realized. Yes, I'm, out yeah. of, I'm out of sync. <laughs> oh, out of sync. Listen, you go you go home tonight and pray huh? and, and, and put on a good prayer. And pray. <laughs> <laughs> all I right. Will. I wish you all the best, and I'd love to know if you get through. Just text me, you know, eight one six five two six one, and let me know if you get through. All right. Eight one six five two six one. Five two six one. Right. Thank you very much. I really hope you get through. And all the best. All right. Okay, Take you care. Bye bye. Uh, let's go now to Tammy. Tammy, good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Thank you. I'm fine. Good. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from the U.S. We're in the U.S. In Minnesota. Oh, it's good to have you. Thank you so much. I'm wondering if a U.S. citizen has guardianship of a child from Jamaica, what kind of uh, visas can they apply for to have the child come to uh, the U.S. to visit? Uh, hi, that one. Uh, hi, Tammy. This Paul? is this is Paul. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for calling. Hi, I hope Paul. things I hope things are good over there in Minnesota. Um, Yes, they are. Thank you. Uh, if if you have guardianship, basically, um, it, it would be a regular B one B two visa that you would be applying for for the child. Um, you know, like like any of our any anybody else who's applying for a B one B two tourist visa, um, the the burden is on the applicant to show that they have a reason to come back to Jamaica. Okay, so that that's going to be very important in this case. If it's if you're applying for a child for which you have guardianship of some sort, it's important to point out that that you are not trying to use this uh instead of going through a say proper immigrant channel. Does, does that make sense? Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I do. So, so, but as okay, as, okay. as far as what you are able to do, it would it would be a regular B1 B2 visa. Is that is that considered or what's called a visitor's visa? Yes, ma'am. That's it. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's and what is the time limit? How long can the child stay away on the visitor visa? Okay, so what there is is a six month uh, limit in a, in basically on any one year. Um, um, we we generally recommend that that we that you use that visa um, for shorter for short visits. You know, and it's the same thing. The, it's important to point out that the visa is what we give that that allows the traveler permission to get to the door at the United States and request entry. Mm -hmm. So it's the Customs and Border Patrol that ultimately lets you in or does not let you in. So if, for example, um, it's be the, the the border agent believes that that you are trying to use that visa instead of a proper immigrant visa, they may actually deny you entry. 
So it's important to you to, okay. to know that 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 technically speaking, there's a six month limit on it, but that you in practice want to use that very sparingly. Okay, and uh, what types of things would you bring to prove that it's just for a visit? What type of things would they need to? Be comfortable with that. Sure. I mean, it 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 certainly depends on on your individual situation and 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 the uh, the child and and what's going on there. It's important to to point out, you know, they're the that they're I don't I don't know. I'm I'm giving you hypotheticals, right? Um, their schooling situation. What's their home situation? Who are who are they staying with? Are they are they in a stable situation that it makes sense for them to go back to? Um, you know, it's it's basically proving that 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 applicant has reasons to come back to Jamaica. I love to ask a question. She meant she uses the term guardianship. Is this a legal thing where she has adopted that child? I'm just trying to understand. So I'm I'm assuming. So Tammy, correct me if if I'm wrong. Um, I'm assuming that that this is, that is not a child that you have legally adopted, but rather somebody that you have a more informal arrangement with. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If if it if it had if it was a a proper adoption, adoption that had that, legal, had, that right. had gone through the courts and the legal channels, then we would be having a different conversation about possibly uh, applying for an immigrant visa mm. for the child. But since there's no formal, ad well, no adoption per se, she just uses the term guardianship, and that term would that have any place in your law? Not not really, because it's not it's not something that directly gives her, gives her control. Yes. over him or her. And it means, therefore, if that child is going to go to the States, um, wouldn't she have to get permission from the parents to take that child? You know, as, as consular officers, we feel much more comfortable if that, if that permission is there. I don't, I don't know the details of, of the situation yes, yes. that we're talking about with Tammy. In, in general, uh, if, it's a, if it's a minor, the parent should, oh, it's a minor, should right. have some, some sort of uh, permission should be should be granted on the part of the parents. Absolutely, but from both parents too. Um, yeah. So even even if um, the U.S. Uh, uh, citizen has guard legal guardianship of the child, the parents should still give some further uh, proof of permission. Ideally, yes. Es especially b yeah, both okay. both okay. both when applying for the visa, and and that permission, if the visa is granted, is something that the child should carry with them as well to show to the to the border agent. Okay, all right. All right. Thank you very much for calling, and you have a wonderful day. You keep right. on listening. Thank you for your help. Bye -bye. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Let's uh, go to Anne Marie before we go for the break. Anne Marie, how are you? Hi, good morning, Mr. Darby. Good to have you. And we have Paul Rivera mm -hmm. and Sharon Paul. Davis. And Sean? Sharon, good oh, morning, Emory. Sharon, oh, good morning. Yes, um, one question I um, asking this this person had an um, appointment to go to the embassy, but she's, she's um, not good at interviews. So she had a son who is a police officer. So could he take her? Okay, and Marie, thanks for your question. So this is an adult applicant who yes. uh, you're saying isn't, uh, you feel wouldn't be able to present herself well or would, yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. has a challenge? Well, uh, we have applicants who come in sometimes with a, a, a child uh, to accompany them and, and facilitate the process. That per, As an adult, that person would still be interviewed. Uh, however, uh, if they wish for someone to accompany them on the inside, that person should have appropriate ID, government-issued ID that's valid. Is that police officer? Okay. So could he go with her? I, I would say he should be able be allowed in to come to the interview with her. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 wouldn't have to put it on the application. Put that he's accompanying her. Yeah. N no, we don't have a, a space for that. So we, what oh. he can do is he can arrive at the embassy, and when she comes to check in. Uh, they can explain that he's escorting her uh, due to whatever, if it's a, a, a handicap um, or because she isn't able to uh, to speak appropriately and uh, communicate yeah, yeah. And, uh, understandably, and he wants to assist her. I th we accommodate that. He just needs the appropriate identification to be allowed to enter. For him. For him. Correct. For himself. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, the person, okay. So each person uh, who enters the U.S. has to have the appropriate identification. Okay. okay. All right. Because she had, she had um, this, um, she I, had this problem that she can't I remember tell you what. sometimes. I tell you what, can you, can you hold and we come back? Because she'll, okay. she has already answered you, so unless you want to ask another question. Okay, all right, okay. All right. All right. Sir. Thank okay. you very much for calling. You, uh, Delores, how you do? I'm good, Mr. Darby. You know what? I'm selfie probably program. You know, you have to be a list to myself. You must do that. You know. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, all right. Where are you calling from? Yes, and good morning to your guests. Yes, good morning, Paul good morning, and Sharon. Yes. Good to I'm have you. I'm calling from Kingston. Hey, good to have you. You go ahead. Yes. One question, please. My visa has expired from 2014. I'm in the process of renewing. Would it be possible for me to get it back? Um, uh, to get back, I'm not following you. Could you just clarify what you mean to to get back? You're in the process of renewing. renewing You've submitted it to the embassy? Pardon me? Have you submitted your No, no, not yet. Not yet. I'm planning to. So could you just clarify what you mean by is it possible you, to get it back? Is it that you'd want the, the, um, the passport? The visa before? has expired. No, no, has we understand, it. I understand what I'm trying to say to you. Do you have something else coming up where you need the passport earlier? No, no, not really. Oh, so, okay. So she just wanted to find out if um, she can get it back earlier um, while, while it's being renewed. But um, tell, tell us how that works. If you apply for the visa, will you be willing to give back that passport? before you have completed processing um, the new visa? Oh, generally, if you're renewing a visa, it's a really quick process. However, if we still have it for whatever reason and you need it perhaps to apply for a visa somewhere else, we can return your passport to you. Is, is, is that the answer? Does that answer satisfy what you were asking? No, not, not, not as quite. Well, I am asking the question. Would it be possible for me to get back my U.S. visa? Or are you asking if you can get another visa? Yes. Well, you, you would have to apply for the visa. You have to come in and have your interview, but you can apply for the visa. The website is usvisa-info.com. So you go online and apply for the visa. You get an appointment to come in, and at that point you'll be interviewed you want to bring in your, your old passport so we can see that you had the visa before. And, yes. And uh, you'll interview with the consular officer, and they'll determine whether or not you qualify for the visa. Okay. Okay? Okay, thanks much. You're welcome. Have a great day. And you too. All right, Thank you take care then. All right, uh, let's go to another caller. Sophia, how are you? Sophia? Oh, hi. How are you guys? Good to have you. We're doing pretty fine. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, we are hearing you very well. Hi, the the whole world is hearing here. you, actually. You heard me? Uh, pardon me? I said the whole world is hearing you. No, I didn't. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you're going to say good morning good. to the world now. <laughs> yes, good morning. <laughs> uh, listen, I have a cousin who went to the state. I have a 10-year visa. And she fell ill while there and spent eight months, and it has been two years now, and she's afraid to travel again. Will she? Do, do she have anything to fear? Hi, Sophia. This is Paul. Um, so I just want to just want to make sure she went to the U.S. She stayed for eight months, mm -hmm. and then came back to Jamaica. Yes, yeah, she she was ill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and she's and she's she'd like to travel back to the U.S., but she's worried that maybe for some reason she might not be allowed in. Right. So, so here's the first thing. Um, it's very important um, for for folks who have a visa already when they go to the United States, and if something like that happens, the very first thing that they should do if they mm -hmm. think that they're going to um, go beyond their their authorized stay, they can apply for for uh, mm -hmm. an extension. You apply to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services for an extension. Um, explaining your situation, why it is that you need to stay in the United States longer than, than what your visa has authorized. Um, and most of the time, if, if the reason makes sense, they will, they will certainly grant that, such that if ever they go back to the United States, it's, it's a much simpler 
explanation, right? They can say, I got sick, I asked for the extension, everything is fine, I have, you know, I, I used okay. my visa, my visa properly. That's, that's the most important thing um, she should have done at that point. Um, I can I can tell you oh. that 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 so by according to the law, however, what has happened then by not requesting that extension is that she has overstayed her visa. Um, you know it it it's not really a question for the embassy at this point. Her her visa still remains valid, mm -hmm. but if you were listening to the show earlier, as I mentioned, okay. the visa is the permission to knock on the door. Uh, when she gets to the border, it is possible that the that the agent at that point will say that she overstayed her visa, that she misused the the privilege of the visa, and possibly not allow her to return. So okay. wha while it's it's wow. it's it's possible that she may be uh, able to go back in without without problem, that's not something that I can that I can promise or, or guarantee you. Okay. What I can tell you is, and for for you and for I anybody out there, the the extension request is something that is that is very much worth considering and doing if if you're in that position. Oh. Okay. So even if she have the 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 documents to show that the hospital documents that she was sick. You know, th I would it wouldn't hurt to carry those with her if she if she tries to go back to go back so she can show yeah, why yeah. why it is that mm -hmm. that 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 overstay happened. Um, another question. So before um, you go, were you able to cover your bills? Before you go, were you able to cover the bills and so Yes, on? yes. Uh -huh. No, because she's young and she's not working. And she didn't know she just fell ill. So she was able to cover bills there. So I don't no. All right, you're going to ask another question. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a friend who is on filing, and the status said approved, but there has been some issue with the affidavits. Like a simple mistake was there, and they sent it back to, um, to get it fixed. Is there anything that person can do to get the appointment um, before the affidavits is um, fixed? So uh, th this is Paul again. So you're, when you're talking about filing, is somebody filing for an immigrant visa, right? Not we're not talking the the visitor visa anymore, right? right? Okay. So no immigrant. Yeah. So from 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 the embassy's point of view, everything gets the 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 packages get sent to us from the United States, and so they go through a a, f mm -hmm. a fairly detailed process in the United States for gathering all of the information, all of the necessary paperwork, um, and and most of the time that doesn't get sent down to us until that paperwork is mm -hmm. ready. So um, from what it sounds like, oh. um, what it sounds like is that the, the file that you're talking about is actually still in the United States. Mm -hmm. Right? So so it's okay. it, uh, until, well, it, until it, that... It says approve. Approved uh, approved I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what what that means in in the context that you're talking about. But it sounds like, um, if she's looking at it in the system and it says approved, that somehow it's ready to move on to the next phase. But that next phase isn't going to happen until those things get cleared up. And until those things get cleared up, it won't be sent down here for an interview. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Um, now. Sharon or Paul, there are persons who have been to the States and uh, they incur, well, two things. You can probably get a ticket from the police while you're driving, mm -hmm. and, or you probably fell ill in the States and you had to go to the hospital. And uh, because of the high cost of health care there, uh, you're not able to cover those bills. Tell me what impact, the, say, a ticket, for example, or not being able to pay your bill before you left there, what impact that can have the on your ability to The, the ticket is there. something that, w that we see fairly often. Yes. Uh, as you say, folks who think that you still drive on the British side of the road over in the United <laughs> States, and they, they, uh, they get into trouble uh, for one reason or another, um, that, that stays on your record. It's a, if you get pulled over like that, um, it's possible that you might have been fingerprinted. They will have taken your, your information, your, your name, your date of birth, and all of they that. They fingerprint oh. you for that? It, okay. you know, it, 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 depends it, it depends on the situation. certainly depends on the situation. But yeah. those, those records will follow you forever. 
Those records follow you in, in perpetuity. They don't, Amen. They don't go away. Mm-hmm. So uh, when you come back in to apply for the visa, even if you try to go back into the United States on, your, on your, what may be still your, your valid visa, yes. you, you will run into trouble. Um, there, we've seen folks who um, don't even know that there is a warrant for their arrest in the United what? States because they've committed multiple uh, traffic infractions that yeah. they have left pending, thinking, I'm just going back to Kingston and it's not going to be a problem. But they try to go back to the U.S. and it is a problem. So if you, if you, run, if you get into trouble with the law in the U.S., take care of it because it will, it will come back to haunt you later. The, I tell you, that computer... You see, <laughs> it should have my memory. It should have a bad memory. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what about the medical bills? If you have to get uh, medical care, and you, it's a, it's a similar thing, you know. Uh, if you if you leave, you're you're leaving a debt. You're leaving a debt. You know, it's um, it's it's something that's that's certainly not not looked upon favorably, and it, and it certainly can have a negative impact uh, if you're trying to. Go back if you're trying to renew your visa. All those, all those things stay with you. So, pay your bills, pay your tickets. It 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 makes things much simpler in the end. Yeah, I'll, well, just, I'll, add, uh, yes, I'll just add that the the unpaid medical bills that that can become a visa ineligibility because you're you you're considered a, a public charge, what we call a public charge, oh, oh. because it's the the public that inherits that debt that's unpaid. Um, mm. So that can have well, a negative effect. I was flying there one day on the highway and I was stopped and he said to me, what speed are you going at? I said to him, I'm not even too sure. <laughs> well, you should have said zero. You had already stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have thought. He said to me, well, you're going over probably 80 or 90. I said, oh, really? He said, "That's too far. I said, well, you know, I'm from Jamaica. So he said to me, I'm sure in Jamaica they don't allow you to drive on that speed. I said, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> he said, don't do it again. <laughs> well, other listeners might not be that lucky, so don't try it. Absolutely. Right. Well, time has certainly slipped by. And um, ask the council, yes, it's come to an end. I want to thank you very much, Paul Rivera. And um, that story you told in the break, I, we have to tell that story <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell my listeners. No. True story. I couldn't make that up if I tried. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Sharon <laughs> Davies, thank you very much. By the way, have, have I? Is, is it Sharon Davies? Is that your name? No? Um. Yes, it still is my name. But oh. it'll be a two part name Davies Rose. Rose. Well, some Rose found her. <laughs> yes. And she's got, she got married recently. Congratulations. Thank you. I wonder who's that gentleman? Mr. Aquino Rose. Uh, where's he from? He's from here. Well, <laughs> listeners, I hope that she decides to stay here. <laughs> a beautiful person. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Thank so you so much. Wish you all the best. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, both of you, Paul Rivera and uh, Sharon Davis, our two consular officers from the United States Embassy right here in Kingston. Right here in Kingston. Right here in Kingston. Right here in Kingston.